Well, the Middle East aviation market is set to take off. The International Air Travel Association predicts that air passengers will double to 550 million by 2040. And according to consultant Oliver Wyman, the region's share of the global fleet is set to expand to 6% over the decade from 4.9% currently. CNA's Roland Lim has more from the IATA annual meeting in Istanbul. Emirates Airlines is saying that demand is exceeding supply so much so that their flights are fully booked into the first quarter of next year and that premium or luxury travel is here to stay and not only that but to grow exponentially. Now I spoke with the president of Emirates Airlines that's Tim Clark about whether operating capacity is back to pre-pandemic levels. We haven't reached that level at the moment. We've got about um, 16 to 20 A380s sitting on the ground going through technical, what we call technical remediation. Uh, but we have already exceeded where we had planned to be at this time. Uh, as you say, we had very strong uh, last year, last financial year, and I reckon that this year will be even stronger as we go forward. Um, so yeah, it's a good story. Uh, most of our 777s are flying, in fact all of them are flying, so the fleet, short of those 380s, are working very hard because demand is so strong at the moment. So capacity seems constrained at this point in time, right now, uh, but for how much longer is this likely to impact, say, higher prices for tickets? Where do we see this going? Well, I can say that Emirates is full to the first calendar quarter of 24. So here we are in June, we've got six months of aircraft that are full, we've got to deal with the summer. It's a high class problem, uh, but I'm afraid prices are likely to stay where they are until there is an adjustment of the supply and demand equation. You know, it's simple supply and demand, simple economics. Uh, you, you, as long as there is the supply uh, issue and demand exceeds that, the prices will move accordingly. Um, now, the, the prognosis for capacity um, replacement, if you like, and it is a replacement. I don't see too much going on in the Asian theatre, so to speak. I see a lot of, I mean, SQ is, is, is trying to restore at pace, and it's been quite successful in doing that, and you can see the results that they've had. Others are not so fast, um, and I think this gives a problem for the Asian markets, particularly they are very strong in terms of demand from, from the West, and vice versa. So there are, I can't quite see um, the capacity restoring at the pace to get them back to where they were prior to the COVID situation. Cathay Pacific was, was devastated by COVID and that's a really sad story. A great airline, historically one of the best in the business going back 50 years more. Um, and struggling to get itself back into get itself back into the mix. I'm sure it'll come, and they're working probably very hard to do that. Thai, uh, Malaysian, Garuda, and all the others. So, as long as they are still t trying to get there, I think capacity will be in in a situation where it doesn't meet the demand that, and therefore prices will remain as they are. The premium or luxury segment seems to be growing at quite a pace. I mean, even exceeding that of business travelers. Well, I, I think, again, you've got to be careful about the, uh, one of the, the, the sort of dogmas that was coming out, being, being, being spoken about at great length during the COVID was that corporate travel would never return, ergo that we would all be on Teams and Zoom, shock horror, and that the, the technology would take us away from flying. Well, in my career, which is a long one, I've heard that so many times. I heard it when the 747-400 was coming, it would overfly everybody. Then we went into the digital age and everybody would, um, would have no need because they could, in the age of information, communicate without having to fly. I said the reverse, but at the same time, there was wealth being created in the economy which went into the discretionary segments. And the discretionary segments had a high propensity to pay for the higher fares in the premium cabins. And that is what we've seen. We always used to say business class is a misnomer. It presupposes that everybody in business class is on business. Well, they're not. And so as the business segments diminished, as we've seen many times, 208, 209, 1991, 92, 98, we can talk about the multiple ways. So they were backfilled by people who wanted to travel. And if you travel on one of our 380s and the upper deck, which has got first and business, you will see that. You don't see that many business people. And if they are, they're not as I am dressed. They're out to enjoy themselves. 
So is the, I guess, premium market, is that here to stay, do you think? Is that yes. likely to grow yes. exponentially? Yes, yes. Well, well we've, look, we, we have about 30% of the first class market, full stop. And if we look at the business segments as well, with the 76 seats we've got in the, in the 380, um, and 116 of those, you can see how vital it is that this continues to grow. And, and so far, we have no problem with that. I believe that um, the, I, I don't know whether COVID triggered this, uh, whether it was a behavioral change in the demand, but nevertheless, uh, we introduced premium cam uh, our premium economy in August of last year with 56 seats on the main deck of the 380. They're full. They're completely full. And the people really enjoy it. Now, they're not trading down, up, down from the upper deck. They're coming up from economy, which is what we wanted to happen, because we already knew that in the higher uh, price point segments of economy, that if they could get more and pay a little bit more, they would take it. And surely enough, that's what they did. We kind of underestimated. Our planners were working on about 5 to 7%. Well, it's like got about 10 or 15%. So it's, it's a good story at the moment. What's the growth like in the Middle East market, aviation market, the forming of financial ties of the, between the Middle East and Asia? The growth, it's huge. It's huge. I think over the next, uh, probably the next 10 years, a lot of the commercial economic activity of size and pace on the planet will be in the Middle East, West Asian area. So you've got the Indian economy moving at pace. Uh, the whole of the Middle East is moving at pace. Of course, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has got an amazingly ambitious plans, which is going to drive a lot of economic activity with huge multiplier effects, not just on the surrounding regions, of which there will be large amounts, but also on the global economy. No surprises then that Emirates is actually putting in a substantial order of between 100 and 150 new jet planes as its fleet of Airbus A380s is set to retire in the next 10 years.